Back to David Kinchin, please. I'd like to call this meeting to the County Board of Commissioners to order. And all commissioners are present tonight. And we do have a special thing that uh, we'd like to do tonight. Uh, Melanie Ray is going to uh, come up and she is going to uh, sing her, her beautiful voice for us. And then she will have the Pledge of Allegiance. And answer the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, if you are a stand, we're going to have. Uh, County manager, do your prayer. Okay. Melanie, it's all yours. Okay. You go ahead and stand. We'll do the national anthem and then we'll leave right into the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say, can you? Okay. Go ahead, county employees. Tell us something. I am a county employee. I'm currently the deputy director. 
director of Board of Elections, but will be going to finance in April 1st. And um, I am past president of the Cleveland County Coral Society here in Cleveland County, and I'm also a proud member of a group called Sweet Adelines. We're a media conover called Caroline Style Forest. We compete regionally, and we got to go to the international competition in Denver last October. So I'm very proud of that, and uh, I'm local. From Bull and Springs. My parents were Tom and Betty McGraw. My dad was associated with Garden Web. And I'm glad to say my ancestors found me in the county, the Falls and the Spanglers. Those were my grandparents. So I'm through a bread, Shelby, Cleveland County. So I'm very supportive of this county. I'm glad I work for this county and can say that I'm proudly from here. And I enjoy being here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Item D, the budget amendment in the Economic Development Department. 
asking you budget $4,950 in local grant funds to cover the cost of equipment for the CDBG Small Business Entrepreneurial Grant for MAKO Incorporated. Item E is a budget amendment in the landfill. Asking you to budget $198,455 from our insurance carrier for the loss of a piece of landfill equipment due to a fire. Item F is a budget amendment in the health department. Asking you to budget $22,009 in federal grant funds for expenses associated with cancer and heart disease screening. Item G is a budget amendment in the health department. We're asking you to budget $3,000 in donations to be used for operating expenses and animal control. Item H is a budget amendment in the Sheriff's Office. We're asking you to budget $19,231 in state forfeiture funds to be used to purchase a vehicle. Item I is a budget amendment in the Sheriff's Office. We're asking you to budget $39,425 in federal forfeiture funds to be used to pay and strike control fees. Item J is a budget amendment in the Workers' Compensation Department. Asking you to budget $400,000 in funds to cover a uh, two workers' comp settlements. Item K is a permanent easement to the City of Kings Mountain for a sewer line uh, that will be serving um, Southern Power Company. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner, at this time, any questions about anything on the consent agenda? The Pregnancy Resource Center of Cleveland County is requesting a map amendment for approximately 1.3 acres on North Carolina 226. There's currently a single family dwelling on this track and also a vacant track, two parcels of the vacant track in the rear. The request is from Manufactured Home Parks, RM, to General Business, and General Business is adjoining those two parcels. We've advertised for the public hearing tonight, and we have recommendations from isothermal planning and also from the planning board. Isothermal recommended approving the amendment, stating that uh, the area immediately to the north was already general business, and land uses in the vicinity are a mix of commercial and residential. Land use plan indicates that the future use of the subject site is commercial. And given the proposed use of the property, its general compatibility with the surrounding land uses and the recommended future land use of the proposed rezoning would be considered appropriate. The planning board also recommended approving the amendment. Uh, that was by unanimous vote. They state, also stated that it would be consistent with the 2015 land use plan. Uh, this area is designated as commercial. And also stated that the amendment would be reasonable and in the best interest of the public, uh, stating that uh, due to the current economic situation in the county, uh, new businesses are definitely encouraged. I'm glad to answer any questions. Declare the public hearing over. Anyone want to speak for or against the Pregnancy Resource Center of Cleveland County zoning map amendment? Please come to the podium, state your name and address. Anyone want to speak for or against? Commissioners, thank you uh, for hearing our petition for the, uh, for the zoning change. 
this is something that's, that's new for us. Our, I'm the director of the Pregnancy Resource Center. My name is Matthew Hall. And I've been working with this ministry for, it is a ministry to ladies in the community and families, uh, particularly dealing with the issue of pregnancy and associated uh, circumstances that may uh, surround that. We are a pro-life ministry, and uh, this is the first opportunity that we've had as a ministry to have a home of our own. And the reason we chose this area is the property of three acres is directly behind um, the, uh, the track uh, that joins the back part of it was donated to our ministry. And so um, when we found this uh, piece of property available, uh, we felt like that, that was the Lord's direction for us. And so uh, we purchased the property. Uh, the single family as well, and we, uh, we have uh, Mark Thompson and uh, Mark Patterson working on the designs for that so that we can get that up to code for a uh, commercial property. And uh, just talking to the neighbors, around the property, the house is, uh, you know, has been a rental property you know, for some time. And, um, and we're just glad to be able to have it too. Uh, the way we look at it is, uh, it's really just like us when we come to know Christ. We're gonna redeem the property and we're gonna make it a shining example for the Lord in our community. And we wanna help families through that ministry. And so uh, it's really a momentous occasion for us. And so uh, right now we're in the process of removing, uh, doing demolition. And once we get that done, then we'll start uh, pulling our permits to actually begin the renovation process. So uh, I just wanted to come before you and really thank you for just hearing this um, uh, result and, um, and let you know that, uh, that we're going to do our best to be, uh, to be good citizens in the community <coughs> as we have been. But uh, now we're the home of our own. And I do want to offer an apology to uh, Eddie Bales. Uh, when I was before the, the planning commission, I was actually the only one here. And uh, I think the chairman was uh, actually thought I was you. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, um, is there any questions of the commission? I've got, uh, I've got some brochures of the ministry if you want to pass these around so you'll know what we're being part about. So there's about five of them. And, uh, so oh, okay, that's fine. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Uh, my name is Matthew Moss. I'm the executive director of the Pregnancy Center. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak for or against? Hearing none, we Motion to approve the zoning map amendment. Last year to approve the zoning map amendment. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Thank you. Going to our regular agenda, the first item is Matthew Senior Center Funding. Commissioner, uh, you know, we started with this back in. December, and uh, we have talked back and forth a little bit on this issue. And I believe Monty's here. Monty, would you like to come up here? My comment. Hey, I want to thank you for letting us come for you again. This is our third time we're back. Um, you asked us to go for our city council to see if they would support our, our project. Of course, we wanted to expand our senior center. It's about a $1.1 million project. We did go to Fort City Council on uh, uh, back in January, February, January 2nd, 22nd. They did support us uh, as far as allowing $300,000 that they would put toward this project over a four year period. So we're coming back to you folks tonight again asking for $300,000 uh, to match that. And then we, are, we plan to raise the rest from the community. Uh, that's where our feasibility. Show that's what the figures show. This is about a 1.1 million dollar project. Any more questions? I know we're probably saturated with information the last couple of times, but I just want to answer your questions. Here's the question. At this time, we should do a request on the board for funding for the Patrick Senior Center. We might have a motion or a discussion. I guess we're all looking at each other. Yeah. 
<clears throat> I guess I was the one that went back and went to commit this wrong from the city of King Tom Stockwood and looking back, you know, we've met half of what the city has done in the past when they built the senior center and so forth. So that would be my recommendation that we take a look at doing half of what the city has done and then we stay with the same track record because when they build it, they've done 600, they cut there was a half this time, we've done 300, and we can cut off to 150. And the budget coming up, I can talk to a county manager and cut it over four years, that would be more adaptable. That's just what they suggest at the time, unless someone else has got it. I think from prior discussions, what I think we were, we were told earlier was that we needed all that funding or none is that correct are you looking at 300,000 or, or that would or what would be enough to make the project feasible is that correct we would like to see that and we would probably move ahead if we can get less than that but we may come back for you see you later days yes sir if we could do that Ron, that's yeah I mean, I, we'd be grateful for whatever you decided I, mean, I think if we the, the request really was based on the assessment we made after talking to you know, about 79 folks. And well, I'm just giving, I mean, I've been doing this for a while and I'm just giving my best uh, uh, assessment, I guess. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, it, looking at that particular figure, I think that it would be a very modest amount of uh, equipment and furnishings. Of course, the rest of it would come from the private sector, uh, you know. I mean, we could, we could do with less than that, have either less furnishings or uh, no furnishings. I, I, I uh, just I called the uh, bail this morning and just told him that uh, we just did this part of the report that if we had uh, 250,000, for example, over four years, which would be 62,500, uh, that would be um, that would be basically no furnishings whatsoever. And, and we still have to raise, you know, another five hundred fifty thousand from the private sector. So, I mean, that's just again, we're just uh, we're trying to do the. Nobody really wants to be unsuccessful with a, a campaign because you have to get it there. And people have already committed it, and obviously they want to see it successful. And uh, so we're just trying to make it successful. I, I think when I gather and talk to the commissioner, everybody feels like the deed is there, that it's a, it's a worthwhile project and the, the center has done performed well uh, for the money that what we got last time. So we're just we're just trying to meet the need and and just give you our best uh, guesstimate how you know how much we would think we would need. But we would be grateful, I guess to answer your question, we'd be grateful for whatever you do. I guess Monty said if we you know if we found at the end of the campaign or near the end of the campaign if we were short and you felt like you, you couldn't do what we were requesting or, or even a little bit less, we hope you would consider, uh, you know, again, based on the need uh, that maybe we could come back. But again, that, that's, that's, our, that's from our perspective. So we appreciate your consideration of this and any other questions we'd be happy to answer. Yes, One of the one of the other things that we talked about was whenever uh, it was presented earlier was that this was a scale back. This was what was needed, not would it need to scale it back in. I know from several discussions I've had, you know, if this if this is something that that county is partnering up with, we would we would not want to see the project scaled back. Um, uh, we'd want to see that money raised. I don't think from somewhere else as well. So. Not scale project. That's the term that was used to do the 150,000. Yeah, but continue to plan that out. Those plans are drawn down. Those plans are So, what do you think, Jason, if the, the county make the recommending that we make a contribution of 150,000 if they're able to complete the project as planned now? Contribution. Uh, I think another thing that we mentioned was multi-year and also 
that uh, uh, no funding until the project's until the project's uh, solid that it's, that it's going to happen uh, until the rest of the money is, is raised. Y'all want to put together all the motions? Y'all want to pass the motion? We've been uh, recently awarded a, another grant from Carolina Thread Trail to begin work on Phase 4 Gateway Trail. And this grant is $440,550. And it's a two phase grant. Uh, the first phase would be for the design portion, $25,000. And second installment would be $115,550 for actual trail construction. So we, we anticipate uh, needing a, a match of county funds, $5,000, uh, in the next budget year, not this budget year, but for the trail construction portion. And that would be on county dollars required. Questions, Commissioner How many county dollars? <coughs> 5000 $5, Okay. What was the total grant? 140500 I make a motion that we accept the grant, but in reading the grant it says the recipient is responsible to make sure the planning happens and the trail from the plan is implemented. If not, we're responsible to pay all the grant back. Correct. Right. That's correct. We have to build the two miles. Right. So my suggestion is we ran into some rough roads in the last one that we have our finance director or county manager oversee the grant sign off before anything is paid out. So, you know, we, we, we've had some bunch of roads on some grants before when we've got caught in the mind, and that's one way that I think that either our finance director or county manager is responsible to make sure the money spent to finish the trail. I'm down to the position you have a working board that you approve 5,000 match of grant and that the county manager and the finance director or the county manager or designate the county manager or his designate oversee the schedule the funds. Right. And the motion on the floor. Second. Second. Over. Any further discussion? Right up there for a minute. I believe at your last meeting, we're talking a little bit about uh, mental housing in 
enforcement in the towns and we were recommending a fee $250 case for administering our minimum housing code with inside the municipality who chooses to contract with the county for that service. We're asking for your comments on, on that tonight. We discussed this for several meetings. Uh, we thought the question was important. Was it 250 plus any expenses? The, uh, the towns would occur additional cost. Um, this would basically just pay for uh, our internal cost and any legal ads that would need to be run, uh, the towns would be responsible for and also the ventilation uh, they would be responsible for if they chose to uh, proceed with, with that particular case. Is the 250p, is that a per occurrence or per, um, if, the, if there's, if it drags on for somehow, sometimes these drag on for uh, quite a bit of time. It's that 250p. So per 250p per house. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any motion to approve the enforcement fee? Uh, I guess one other question. Since we're joining, are we going to put a, a, a trial period to it to see if this thing works out, or are we just going to say we're going to do it from now on? The agreements have a, an opt out clause in them when you agree to, when you have a, an agreement with a town, there's a clause in there that, that you can opt out in, in a certain period of time, it's 90 days. You can give them notice that you no longer want to. <laughs> conduct that activity. Any other discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Thank you. Just say we have to deal. Our next agenda item is the uh, MPO, and I'm going to turn that over to uh, this is his favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you want to introduce our, our guest on um, your text with the Lake Norman RPO? Not a subject of what we're talking about tonight, but uh, Bjorn is uh, working with us on this through the organization that we're currently members of. He, he does, he does organize the board for the RPO and does a good job. I think where we at tonight, Bill and I, we, we talked about this thing. Bill attended one of the last meetings. We've got another meeting scheduled. And I know we took action to say that we would pursue stopping any action other than the city of King's Mountain. In return, during the time we were talking, they Hank sent us a map. Hank's a planner for the Now He sent us a map, and I know Bill and I assumed that the map was a Five county project we're working on. Come find out it wasn't okay. And so we asked, would the MPO take <coughs> all of Cleveland County or none of Cleveland County? Because our feeling is we're better off to stay with one plan organization, but split it. Apparently, Bill is met with the PCC right. in Gaston County and, and uh, Hank the planner and the staff recommendation, they don't take nothing but King's Mountain. They don't take anything except the map that, that he brought in that night. That they're still going to move ahead with that. So we need some direction. We've got a meeting coming up that, this month. What day is it? March 26th is the elected official meeting. Yeah, yes. so we, need to, we need to go talk to them. And if we want to pursue trying to keep the county intact, going all with the gas and MPO or do we want it? Let them have what they want, keep the rest of the RPO, or do we want to do like we said last time, do whatever needs to be to try to stop them and attract it for the decisions that came from. So that's the discussion. We've got three options. Bill and I need some directions. 
So when we go, we say this is what the commissioner would like to see done. Like I say, try to keep us all intact and with MPO, keep everything intact except the city of Kings Mountain because the mayor and CT and his press their opinion, they they're choosing to go with the MPO and stopping at that, that, that boundary and stay with the RPO. What, what direction do you want to give Bill and I? Well, one of those has been taken off the board before us, right? The MPO doesn't want all of the defense. Well, that's the staff recommendation, but the elected officials will make that decision when we have the next meeting. And in talking with, the, I believe, the chair, uh, Joe from uh, Gaskin County, uh, he's in favor. Yeah. He's in favor of doing the tri county region. And DOT is also. DOT is in favor of doing the tri county. <coughs> I, I personally, I, I, I still have a problem with having two different sets of elected bodies looking at the planning for Cleveland County. Uh, the NPOs having, having all their members. Uh, looking at our planning and then the RPOs looking at it. And we'd like to narrow it down so that we've got, uh, I think there's 16 members on each one. Is that right, Lauren? Uh, it depends by how many municipalities and counties there are, sir. I think for for, uh, for the MPO, I think there's 16 members. The RPO right now is, that's going to be narrowed down in June. Uh, I think with the, with the MPO itself, it's got a total of 18 voting numbers, 16 in all all municipalities, but you know, you've got 16 municipalities, and you've got other voting members in that that are serving right there on the light field. 16 to 18, something that there, there's a few more voting members in there. That, they got a nice many full time, so we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it, it, you're pretty close to what you like 16 to 18 voting members. A lot of hands in the pot. I just like to know if we want to keep everything intact, but you know, and that's my feeling. Uh, I think we need to keep everything intact. If, if the NPO to take the whole county, let's, let's do that. If they choose not to and they stick to the boundary, then let's, let's go with what we decided and see what we can do to put an office to it. Because I really think that, you know, some of the interpretation we're using from back in the 60s and the 70s and have it be defined and be interpreted. You're saying that if they want to take the whole county. Don't have Kings Mount sit on it, and that's it. Yeah. If Kings Mount chooses to go off there. But the, the response that we got from our last meeting with the NPO was they didn't care what we wanted. That's they it. were taking the area that they had to find on the map. Didn't make a difference what we see. Right. Uh, even though they asked our opinion. Yeah. But they never made it clear why they chose the other areas. They were saying with the new census and and in those areas they have the right to come in and take it and also what they call fluff the area you know fluffing the area is what needs to be defined uh, like i say uh, you know I may or may not agree but when you read the, the 134 it, it talks about the npos and it talks about the told you that talked about the Midwest and even the Indian Territory and, and Tahoe Lake region. And it even refers to that, that the MPOs take over those planning areas to keep the interstates and, and the commerce moving back when there wasn't any. So I, I think that some of this stuff, you know, personally is outdated. You go over to 135 and it says the state has certain rights, you know, the government has certain rights. And, you know, the elected bodies have certain rights, so, you know, it's just on the laws on the books, it's probably been there a long time, so I, I think they're, they're probably interpreting the way they want to hear it, maybe I'm interpreting the way I want it to sound, you know, but there's got to be, there's got to be something, you know, in it. Well, I'll, I'll be honest, and all I, I mean, I, I've discussed this at length, and I've had a lot of conversations on it, and, and researched it a lot as well, the NPO, going with the NPO, 
The only benefit I can see personally uh, uh, looking at all this, the MBO or the RPO either one is our, our comprehensive transportation plan that they developed for us. And I have said before that I think that was a, that's a ridiculous map that they gave us to begin with. There's things on there that we'll never ever attempt to, to build or, or even need to build. Um, the MPO is going to be more expensive to us to be a member of that than RPO. Um, and with the realignment of the RPO, I understand we'll, we'll have a, a, a bigger voice in the, in the new RPO. Um, I wish there was a way of keeping us whole and all of us being in the RPO since it's less expensive. Uh, and because I really don't see the Personally, I just don't see the benefit to be a member of either one of them. I wish our community college could, could develop our CTP course. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you have to have the vote that we took the last time on this issue? Not that I'm talking. I don't have any answer. Okay. Are you going to be asked to vote for me? No, I think, I think all we're going to do is we're going to ask if we keep it intact. Well, you have to get up under citizen's recognition. Yeah, yeah, they, they may not even ask nothing. I'd like to say you remember Hank, the guy that came and made the presentation. I understand that he was the one who recommended that we don't take us in at all to stick with the map and the people on over here that night. I guess what I'm hearing is that you just want consensus and our support for the commission. What you want to say to me? Well, I, I need, we need the direction if the commissioners feel 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 strong enough to try to keep the county intact without letting them come into the county. We need to reassure that. If the county is willing to keep everything together and go with the MPO, if they would accept us, I need to know that. Um, 
last year, what they have one. I'm going to stick to it. I just want to recognize you. I mean, if you had some, I mean, if you came up here, you're great. I mean, appreciate you coming up. No, uh, it's not a problem. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I've served as staff for the RPO since 2005. The RPO was actually formed in 2002. And in 2001, when the last time the census uh, results came out in the, in the Urbanized area expanded. I actually worked for, I was actually the transportation planner for York County, and the Charlotte urbanized area went into Fort Mill and into Lake Wiley and TDK. Of course, that caused an uproar because you know, the way that they want Charlotte to move the planning across the you know, state line. And so um, there already was a metropolitan planning organization for Rockville, <coughs> so they did an interlocal agreement. So if you have situations where an urban area is already being planned for by an adjacent metropolitan planning organization. Like this is the case for um, a lot of the Mountain Island Lake area. Um, Charlotte actually crossed over to Gaston County, but because the Gaston and PLR already did the planning for it, they did an interlocal agreement to keep the, the county boundaries nice and smooth. And that works as long as there already is an MPO in that area, but there isn't one for Kings Mountain, and that's why we're running into this situation. And it's very common to have counties split by urban area or by their urbanized areas in the study area, which is the, the larger two boundary, cutting the county into two. And it's not ideal. It's better to have the whole county. And the reason why the gas and MPO doesn't work is because of taking off Cleveland County, which would then have a ripple effect and affect Cherville and Gas County and all of Lincoln County, is that their funding formula is based on that urban area population on by the census. So every time they make it go bigger, they don't get more money. So they feel like they'd be getting, they'd be doing significantly more work without getting any funding. And that's the um, that's the issue. And in fact, a year ago, the Lake Norman RPO sent a letter at the request of the TAC to the, to the state of North Carolina asking this very question saying, well, if all three of these counties want to consolidate and form one organization, which is better for everyone because you have contiguous counties, you have uh, fewer organizations that they have to coordinate with, um, it's easier for you guys as, as elected officials, would you allow us to pool the RPO and MPO money? And they said no. And so we tried to do this almost a year ago. They didn't allow it, and that really precluded the discussion of expanding and having all three counties in one organization, which was frustrating because we did think it was the better thing to do. And so that's where we are now. In terms of you know, trying to fight the, the uh, urban area designation and trying to get out of it, if you, can, if you successfully appeal that, you're going to open up the entire state of North Carolina every single urban area because they're going to be trying to do the same thing. Because the urban area expansion that Charlotte went through this past time was the largest in the entire country. It went all the way to Statesville and east almost to Hanson County, further into Lancaster County, as well as um, Lincoln, and further into York County. So every single county surrounding them will be looking at doing the same thing. And they don't appeal on it, though. They just, that's correct. They just did it because they said it's a, it's yeah, a and that, that's the thing is, you know, they haven't really showed us. They law the state they can. They've been telling them. Are you talking about the methodology used to define it? That was that was that went through a, a public comment period about three years ago, maybe four years ago at this point, uh, where uh, communities, planning organizations were allowed to comment on the methodology that the Census Bureau used to define your mass areas. Just a clarification for myself. If our preference was to keep the county open, it would still be very difficult, what well, I'm interpreting and understanding, it would be very difficult for us to keep it whole if they want to expand into King Mountain. Because precedence has been set that that is taken place in other areas of urbanization. 
So even though we would prefer to keep our county whole, we would really have an option other than to strong to voice a strong opposition to it. I think what she's saying, the governor can the governor can make a decision on it. Well, they work hand in hand with the NPL. Yeah, it's, it's a joint decision. Is what the yeah, says. with him and, and, and as far as I'm talking to Tim, Tim's willing to do whatever he needs to at Raleigh to help us if that's what we choose to do. Say it may may not go, but uh, you know, and I think that's what's happened in the past. Nobody shook off this issue. That doesn't mean what they're doing is right, and people disagree. And if we choose to feel like it's not right, then that's what we need to do is whatever means available to approach it to keep it intact. You know, just because set preferences, you know, that's that's there, but doesn't mean that that's the right thing to do. Yes, sir. You do know that we have voted uh, basically to ask counsel to intervene in court to stop this action. Yes, sir. That's what, that's what we have on the table right now. Yes, sir. That we voted. What are your comments on that? I'm not a lawyer, uh, but again, this hasn't, I haven't seen it done anywhere else where that's done successfully. Are you, what what does happen is you can you can do an arrangement to if you have a, a leakage into another county like in Kingston or into Fort Mill, if there's already an MPO that's willing to take that area over, that's fine, and then you can you can draw a boundary that's more palatable to locals. But then and uh, instructions is absolutely correct. The governor does have to sign off on this. He I don't know the bet he hasn't been briefed on this specific issue because the state DOT is the intermediary who was, who was assisting and facilitating this uh, discussion, and as well as the Federal Highway Administration, who have liaisons in the program. Um, yep. I understand correctly. What you really want to do is make sure the whole county is involved. Well, I know what I want to do. What we want to do is group. I know about that. Yeah. What is your recommendation to the group? I think, I think so. Our recommendation, I think the best thing Jason and I talked about it. it. It would be to try to keep our county under one planning jurisdiction if we can. Okay. Let me ask you this. If you go to this meeting and ask, and we're all in agreement uh, that we want the whole county involved, and they say no, do you still want to pursue the motion from last week? Yes. Mm -hmm. so, the consensus type I'm hearing is that go to the meeting, we're going to ask for the whole county to be part of it. If they say no, then we're going to ask council if they get an injunction to stop it. So they either make the whole county or oh, out there. there. Our, biggest, our biggest obstacle, Mr. Chairman, would be showing that there's been some sort of abuse of discretion with regard to the process of how this is being done. Um, the census has a methodology by which it chooses or designates these urban areas. And unless we can show that the NPL is doing something improper in, in regards to how they, they gather their data and apply it in this instance, we would have a very, very, very difficult time um, pursuing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, but that, they come to us a couple of times. And, and that's, that's the kind of thing that we would have to deal with. But I, I mean, just from a there's not really any sort of precedence where this sort of thing has been um, overturned, but or even or even challenged. But again, that's not. Well, I say it's never been challenged, so we may be doing the first. Yeah. Well, let me ask this question. Just take the stages. If you go to the meeting, they turn you down. Then we can hold this just a little bit. They turn you down. Go to our representatives, the general assembly, and the governor. If they don't do it. Guys, tell me. That's all I'm here. I would think what you're saying first before we go to legal counsel. At least we're making a question to the General Assembly. General Assembly. Right. Okay. I, I, I would feel more comfortable with doing what Commissioner Hutchinson suggested until we get to the third step. Uh, if, if, <coughs> I'd like to hear a little bit of legal, yeah. legal guidance before we ask for an injunction. Look, at this time, can, can I have a motion to the table? A motion to the 
place right now that you that you're facilitating. Until until we come back. Yeah, that makes sense. Not going to sue the legal avenue until we find out whether they are yeah. us yes. the yeah. 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 send you this. So wasn't there a date of, of March thirty first that we're going to put this in place that at the last meeting didn't wasn't didn't that come up? I mean, if that it was going to go on effect, whether we liked it or not. They're going to recommend it. Yeah. Going to effect, I think on July, actually, actually July, right? This is July is the actual date, but they're going to make their recommendation. And we've got to do that. Mr. Chairman, since Commissioner Hutchins represents us, I'd like to ask if you feel comfortable following those two. I do, yeah, I, I do, and I think that's what Bill and I are looking for. That now we've got some guidance that we can't get to the next meeting and explain. The consensus and the wishes of all the commissioners just to what we would like to see happen. And if we don't do it, then, then, we'll, we'll, then we would be able to take the next step, which is get over the legislature and rise. But they may not even have the authority if the government and the consensus are the ones to bring it and even say that they could bring it in. I think they're going to pass, pass breath what they did in the past. Uh, I think that's what, what they probably have only certain jurisdiction. They can't just start picking more. Well, according to the census is what the book is saying there. Yeah. My, my first purpose is for us to, to be as a whole to be in the RPF. And, and, and again, the reason why is it's cheaper and uh, other than having the CTP uh, design for us, I, nobody could tell me what they, what even one of these organizations do that is beneficial to our team. Um, I personally feel it. I don't think it's, I, I think it'll be a uphill battle to get the MCO to take the whole thing. Don't you feel? Well, we've got the three different directions. And uh, so what we need right now is a motion, as I understand it, from the council to delay implementation of our uh, motion February 19th. February 19th. Delay that until we hear from you in the meeting and request to cover the whole county until we get some results from uh, General Assembly. And then we'll come back and review what we're going to do on the first day. Okay. okay. Here, let's have a motion to delay council report until we hear from the other two. I'll make a motion to delay council report. Second motion to vice chair. Second, second. second. Well, we proceed with the other two options. Okay. Right. Council that any motion? Yes. Yes. I shall. I'll work hard. I'll do it. Okay, we proceed with the other two. Okay. Here, you got that down? Okay, so the motion's Table the motion for the February 19th meeting and then proceed with the option of first having Commissioner Hutchins go to the meeting and recommend that the entire county be put in the MPO. Second, uh, if that doesn't work, uh, I'll write a book. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, you move forward with uh, contacting the legislators and the governor's office. On, on my motion, I made, I, I prefer just to meet the legal council. Just that part of it. Okay, so you recommend right that. It take the legal counsel out and we'll see the legal counsel's on what I'm doing right now on my motion. Okay. The rest of it, you make a separate motion if you want to. Okay. I don't feel comfortable with the MPO uh, uh, option if, if, if it's going to cost us more for something that's, again, we'll see what happens. Okay. So the motion is for the legal, legal counsel. Legal counsel, stop this legal counsel on action. Yes. Yeah. Motion and I have a second. Now that brings us back to I'm, I'm assuming the consensus is that we want everyone to be all the whole county to be in the MPO. If not, we're going to go to the general assembly. And if not, we'll come back and come back. Not in the joint. Not everyone. I would, again, I would. Okay, so we've got That's one object. <laughs> what do you object? 
Yes. I'm just saying no. I'm sorry, no. I, I, again, I don't know whether it's better for us to go with the NPO or the RPO. I would like for us to stay whole. My preference would be with the RPO because of the cost. The cost would be less than the taxpayers. I don't think they're going to take us all anyway. But I think we, we, I would rather see us all with one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree, but I, I don't. I just, I just wonder whether or not well, that's even achieve, achievable based on what we've heard tonight. People from the organization.
we had a, a productive time in, uh, at NACO uh, in Washington. I think we had a meeting where we discussed, uh, discussed this since a uh, little uh, out there. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to, re or to uh, represent uh, the county in North Carolina on the Community and Economic Development the Steering Committee there. Um, I think it was a good time where we met other elected officials from around the state and around the nation and shared what was working and what, what wasn't working. And uh, good workshops there as well. Also, there was a doctor today at uh, Tractor Supply again since we met last, and uh, they had several dogs that were adopted out there as well. So we need to stop by. When you have time, stop by and thank uh, Mike. He's the manager of the Legacy. Uh, hold those out there. It's really getting a lot of um, a lot of participation from uh, a lot of nonprofits. Uh, there was a rescue uh, that was there from Pennsylvania uh, when I was there. And uh, they also have a lot of businesses that are starting to take. Uh, they're putting up tents outside, so it's getting a lot of attention. I was going to say, in that regard to me, uh, John, since you're on that committee, uh, I was down in uh, Southport recently, and what they've got in the business and found them to do is get each business to uh, give funding for one day. <laughs> Resource Center to thank you again for what you do for the young ladies and ladies in our community. You guys are a very good support for, for our ladies out there and in uh, some situations and circumstances that they get in our life. Thank, in their life. thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. 